Warhol also had a way of describing consumerism as kind of kind of like an equalizer. Uh, he had this to say about Coca-Cola. What's great about this country is that America uh, started the tradition where the richest consumers buy essentially the same things as the poorest. You can be watching TV and see Coca-Cola and you know that the president drinks Coca-Cola, Liz Taylor drinks Coca-Cola, and just and just think, you can drink a Coca you can drink Coca-Cola too. A Coke is a Coke, and no matter what amount of money you spend, you can get the same Coke that anyone else gets. The bum on the street versus, you know, a celebrity. All the Cokes are the same, and all the Cokes are good. This Liz Taylor knows it, the president knows it, the bum knows it, and you, and you know it. Um, it's interesting, and I think that's I think that's kind of interesting that he kind of like, in a way, took very normal things, put them on it in a way like a pedestal or a spotlight, and, and said, look, we all worship these same common objects or these same common people, um, or we're all, in a way, you know, watching and consuming the same things. Let's, let's highlight it. Um, New York City's Museum of Modern Art hosted a symposium on pop art in December 1962, during which artists such as Warhol were attacked for uh, capitulating to consumerism. Critics were scandalized by War Warhol's open embrace of market culture. Now again, so we're talking about street art before, and a lot of it was, you know, kind of anti what was going on, anti-consumerism, anti-capitalism, and here was a person relishing in it. So I think this is a kind of a, a you know, a, a mindset, obviously, that was happening. But look at the work. Look how colorful and bright and cheerful and consumer-friendly uh, Warhol's art was compared to, say, Basquiat's. Um, a, piv a pivotal event was a 1964 exhibit at the at uh, uh, exhibit called the American Supermarket, a show held um, in an Upper East Side gallery. The show was presented as a typical U.S. small supermarket environment, except that everything in it, from the produce, the canned goods, meat, posters on the wall, etc., was created by six prominent pop artists at the time, among them controversial people like Billy Apple, Mary Inman, Robert Watts, Andy Warhol. Warhol's painting of a soup can for in this in the show cost fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, the exhibit the exhibit was one of the first mass. Um, the first mass events that directly confronted the general public with both pop art and the, the you know the overall question of what art really is. So you saw that thing recently where they at the um, in Miami um, uh, the banana with the duct tape. You saw that right? The banana with the duct tape. Art is that art? I don't know. Like that's this is kind of in a lot of ways what this is kind of about. This whole idea about you take over a supermarket and fill it with like this kind of, um, kind of this made up supermarket. And is that art? Uh, specifically, is this you know? I think that was the beginning of this is now considered pop art. Um, and I think this was the beginning of a whole new way to look at art. On June third, nineteen sixty eight, um, radical feminist writer. Valerie Solanas uh, shot Andy Warhol, um, and uh, Mario Amaya, uh, art critic and curator at Warhol Studio. Before the shooting, Solanas had had been a, a marginal figure in the background of the factory of the factory scene. She authored a 1967 book called *The Scum Manifesto*. S U S period C period U period M period manifesto. The Scum Manifesto. Um, a separatist feminist. Um, kind of track that advocated the elimination of men and appeared, and she actually appeared in the 1968 Warhol film I, uh, a man, I, comma, a man. Earlier the day of the attack, Solanas had been turned away from the factory asking for a return of a script she had given to Warhol. Warhol apparently had lost it. I think she got pissed and came back with a gun. Um, Warhol was seriously wounded by the attack and barely survived. Surgeons opened his chest and massaged his heart to simulate the movement again. He suffered physical effects for the rest of his life. So I think for a brief moment, he was actually kind of dead. Um, and uh, the shooting had a profound effect, obviously, on Warhol's life and art. Uh, Valerie um, Solanas was arrested the day after the assault and after turning herself into the police. Uh, by way of explanation, she said that Warhol had too much control over her life. She was subsequently diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia and eventually sent to three years under the control of the Department of Corrections. After the shooting, the factory scene heavily increased security 
and you know pretty much that scene the factory scene in the 60s was now dead um, here's a little news report on that <laughs>